A horror game involving a pandemic and a lot of wine? Well, that hits a bit close to home. But what kind of pandemic and where does the wine come in? During the game's opening, we find out that the sickness causes strong fevers, terrible delirium and death. It has relentlessly decimated the inhabitants of a group of small Mediterranean islands. Rumour has it that a prestigious red wine produced in the capital can cure the sick. We follow the story of Marti Vermello as he steals a boat and heads to the winery in an effort to save his loved ones. As Marti explores the island, the story behind the pandemic slowly unfolds. In terms of the storytelling, most of this is done using notices and newspapers scattered throughout the chapters, which give an insight into how a once prosperous island descended into martial law, chaos and cannibalism. Residents of the island are literally locked in their homes and forbidden to leave under punishment of death in an effort to contain the spread of the sickness. As for Marty himself, I didn't find I connected much to our silent protagonist as there are no cutscenes or dialogue which give you an insight into who he is as a person. For me that didn't really matter though, for I was the protagonist. The majority of the game involves solving puzzles to open doors and some environmental puzzle solving as well. For the doors it mostly involved finding the appropriate symbols to unlock the door of which there could be up to five. I preferred the environmental puzzles to the door mechanisms though, as these started to feel a little bit repetitive after a while. These door puzzles eventually become purely stressful as I was frantically searching for the solutions all whilst being pursued by a headless menace who appears at regular intervals throughout the game. Towards the beginning of the story, we're also introduced to a second antagonist who delivers the first jump scare of the game. He can also be seen at regular intervals throughout the story, seemingly hunting whoever may be left alive on the island. We have some traditional horror game mechanics at work too, such as running out of stamina and no combat whatsoever. Generally though, I feel that once a game introduces an element of combat against its foes, it immediately becomes less frightening. We don't have that in the wine though, at no point did I ever feel completely in control of the game, especially when the environment seemed to shift around me. I didn't expect such a disorientating experience going in, and a particular highlight for me are the sea of wine areas which I won't spoil, not unless you really want to see it on a stream. The wine causes you to question what is real and what isn't. I enjoyed the way that the game kept me guessing, trying to work out what the hell was going on. I also can't talk about a horror game without discussing the prevalence and application of jump scares. Oh shit! These are a plenty throughout the wine, but they never felt cheap for me and they were used effectively. I was caught off guard and genuinely scared on a number of occasions, which only added to my enjoyment. I'm not a masochist, honest. I'm not a fan of games that throw jump scares in for the sake of it, but fortunately this one doesn't fall into this trap. They tended to be where I least expected them to be, rather than the more obvious places. This did keep me on edge throughout the game though and had me dreading going round corners, especially in the hedge maze. I completed this game in about three hours and a couple of sittings. Due to the game being split into chapters, it can definitely be played in shorter sittings if you're a nervous wreck by the end of one chapter. But I would personally recommend setting aside a good couple of hours just to play through it. The story is intriguing enough that it just sucks you in and then scares the life out of you. Without spoiling the end, the game has a satisfying conclusion that caused me to reflect back on what I had experienced. Upon completing the game you'll unlock photo mode as well, which can be used to unlock more secrets. I'm usually a one and done when it comes to horror game playthroughs, but the world building and narrative is intriguing enough for me to go back in and find out more. Plus, I missed a load of cat photos so I simply have to collect them all. Visually the game looks much better than I expected. The colour palette is vibrant and this doesn't have the feel of an intense horror game. This bright and breezy setting looks just like somewhere I'd want to go on holiday, not somewhere that will leave me screaming in terror. The darker areas that are lit by only candles or a flickering light are equally stunning to look at, but in a more ominous way. The controls are smooth as was the overall performance, 
I don't really recall seeing any drops in frame rate throughout the whole game. I also didn't encounter any bugs, which seemed to now be a feature of the more pricier games. And ultimately why I found myself enjoying indie games more and more. All the more impressive is that this game is made by solo developer Carlos Coronado using the Unreal 4 engine. This game really showcases that a lot of love and passion has been poured into it. Like a large glass of full-bodied wine, if you will. There are also two more Horror Tales games in the works called The Astronaut and The Beggar, which I personally can't wait for and look forward to covering. Horror Tales The Wine is a triumph of imagination and creativity wrapped up in a beautiful yet horrifying package. It is a perfect example of why I love indie games so much. If you're looking for a short and not so sweet experience, this is the vintage for you. If you've enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing. I've also dropped a link to the game in the description.